So we are currently in the car on our roughly one and a half hour drive to the Syrian border. We're in Lebanon. We're just leaving Beirut and uh, we're heading over the mountains and then over to that Syrian border. Our driver is with us and we um, got our visa maybe an hour and a half to two hours ago officially. So it was cutting it close, but we are on our way. We just passed through the Lebanese border control and um, we're in the no man's land area driving currently between Lebanon and Syria. And when we get to the other side of this road, we will be in Syria. So we're halfway there. And we have almost officially made it. Welcome to Syria, right behind me. So further back here, that is the border check where they will check our passport and stamp us in officially to the country. And now we are officially in Syria. Oh, I'm, I'm talking on my camera. Now we are officially in Syria. Got my American passport stamped. Came into the country. It was a surprisingly easy, pretty simple border crossing. We paid $160 for our visas that were pre-approved. And then um, once we made the payments, got a simple receipt and then they stamped us and we were on our way. The whole thing took about five minutes. Um, so it's pretty exciting to be here. So far, it looks exactly the same as it does on the other side of the border. It just looks like Lebanon, but um, Assad pictures everywhere. You see his face just all along, so many pictures of him. But we are continuing on our way to Damascus. How does it feel to be in Syria? I'm here with oh, my dad. Oh, it's great. So cool. So cool to, to have finally made it to check off one of these very, very difficult countries for Americans. And, um, this is 162 for me. So a, a big accomplishment, a major one that is always challenging to get to for people from my country. Well, welcome to Damascus, Syria. It is my first day, first full day in the country. And as you can see, this is the breakfast spread. So absolutely amazing welcome here to Syria. Eating all of these incredible foods for breakfast in this beautiful hotel. This is an old hotel and we're in the courtyard right now, just taking it all in for our breakfast meal. It's great to be here and excited to share my journey throughout Syria and my first day here in Damascus, everything we're gonna get into. Well, welcome to Damascus. We have come in through the main gate of the old city here and um, we're walking through some of the, the narrow streets in the downtown area um, of central Damascus, the old city. Um, and so first reaction coming here has been, um, you know, you look around and kind of like, what, what civil war happened? Uh, I don't see that in Damascus. I don't see any of that destruction. Um, and one thing to note is Damascus was definitely way less hit by a lot of the civil war. So you don't see a lot of that here. In other parts of the country, as we continue our trip, we're definitely gonna see a lot more of that. But for now, it's a, it's a very different story. And so first reaction to Syria is kind of like what, you know, um, I'm confused about what happened. Um, but that is in Damascus. And so the actual population of Damascus has grown since the Civil War, from like four million to five million, something like that, while the population of the country itself has shrunk in half. Uh, partially because people were killed, um, but even more so because uh, so many people left, almost half the population left. And so um, that's kind of uh, gonna be more of the story in the rest of Syria, but Damascus is a very different place. So we're now here at this church, it's called St. Ananias Church. And this is actually where uh, Paul the Evangelist or St. Paul was converted to Christianity. So it's an interesting story. He was actually Saul and he was coming to Damascus, on the road to Damascus, to uh, arrest and um, stop the Christians. And um, what actually happened was on his way, he was blinded. And so they took him to Damascus. And then there he was, um, he was uh, a miracle happened. He, was, he regained his vision. And that is what converted him to Christianity. And then he went off 
uh, evangelizing and traveling around. And so he went to Cyprus, he went all over Greece, he went all over Turkey, to Malta, to Rome. That's where he was finally executed. But um, this is uh, kind of a statue behind me of that moment. So this would be Saint uh, Ana Ananias. And this would be um, Paul, or Saul at the time. He later became Paul after he was converted. But uh, really interesting, this UNESCO World Heritage Site here in Damascus, a lot of uh, major Christian sites like that here. And of course, we're the only tourists here. Nobody, nobody here today, just us. You can actually see a bit of the story here um, of Paul's story, all the different things he did, places he went, you can even see a map of all of the um, locations. So we see Damascus all the way over here. This, I believe this is in Spanish, so Damasco here. But he went, you know, you see by ship, he went all the way to Malta. Malta is a Christian country now, we know, of course. He came all the way to Rome. You know, eventually the whole Roman Empire becomes Christian under Constantine. That happened much later, but you see, you know, Paul the Evangelist traveling around and, and converting people. So very interesting, uh, a lot of this like biblical history here in Damascus. So these are the, the famous um, Damascus boxes that they sell. You can see things like this, beautiful patterns. And um, this one looks like it's for jewelry, something like that. And so the way they produce them is they're actually wood, you see, just solid wood, box, but the top has a pattern. And so what they do, I'll show you, they take something like this, we right? Make, we make format to cut the wood, different details, and we use different kind of wood. And after that, we glue it together and we cut slice like these slices and we glue it on the boxes mm, and after like that this. we make hole to put this kind of mother pearl like this one mm. and we have different kind like this one so they're putting pearl down from seashells you can see and they put those pieces to create these very very intricate boxes you can see some of them over here so inside the brocade of Damascus also it's very famous. Wow, it's beautiful. And he's got ones for this one is very beautiful. This jewelry one jewelry box. Jewelry box. Tea box. This one's for tea. Coasters. Coasters. And of course, to enjoy. after you've had your tea, you can have your cigarettes here. <laughs> and he's also got uh, he's got chess boards, backgammon boards crosses, you know, anything. Yeah, he'll show us the chessboard. So this is the, yeah, the chessboard, and on the other side, got back in, and incredibly beautiful. And we have something also very good. It's not table, it's, it's a miniature of the table, wow. like this one. We turn it like this, and after we open it, you can play backgammon with a smurf wow. and chess board nice, wow. or card or wow. you can use it as decoration like this one to put it in your house just for decoration wow it's the smallest size we have bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger wow really amazing famous famous artwork here in damascus as we continue along the streets in Damascus, you'll actually notice it's it's kind of quiet. There's not a lot of people out. I say that as a, as a few cars pass, but it's actually very quiet. Um, but the reason is uh, it's more of a nighttime culture kind of place. People t tend to get up late here. And so, um, and that's probably true because it's hotter in the summer and you know, a little more of that Mediterranean style. But yeah, they, they Generally, not a lot's going on in the morning and people like to go out late at night and um, be out much more nocturnal hours, which is kind of interesting. But we're getting into a bit of a busier part, so we're seeing a little more people around than some of these smaller side streets we, which we were on. 
And in many of those smaller side streets, they're, they're very, very quiet. And they used to have much more shops, much more tourists, much more people back in there. Like the shop we were at, one of the few remaining ones because uh, so, many, so many of those shops have closed since the war and are no longer in business because tourism here is almost nothing at this point. Hello. Kind of a bit of a Syrian donut. So it's, uh, it's fried wheat dough and then uh, dipped in a sugar liquid and it's very, very sweet. I have had something similar to this before and trust me, it is very, very sweet. See everywhere we go, the watchful eyes of the president of Syria right behind us here. This poster is everywhere. When the mosque used to be a ceramic temple, it used to be a Hello. Hello. One pomegranate, please. Thank you. Oh, you have the cash. How much? How much is? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. So ten thousand is about sixty-six cents, yes. right? Sixty-six cents for the most delicious fresh pomegranate juice. So let's try it. Oh, super good. Some beautiful handmade Syrian carpets here. This one, this one Syrian Bedouin. This mm. one camel hair. Camel hair. Yes. This one by needle. Mm. This one about 80 years old, good condition. No repair. No. Uh, no. Wow. This one camel hair. This one camel hair. Look. Also this one. This one Kilim Shiraz. This one from Iran. From Iran. Yes. Okay. This one very fine. So all of these are old, not this one made, old, not yes, new. Hand made. Made. This one Dibble. Oh, also, look this one. This one Syrian Bedouin. Mm. Here Carbit. Here Kirim. Look this one Nod. Look, Nod. Yeah, yeah. Look. It's very beautiful. Yes. How about this one? Yeah. Four, four, four thousand five hundred. 4,500, okay. 400, 400, 400, 450,000 Syrian baht. And how much would that be, like 30. 100, $30? Wow, $30, wow. Yes, this one handmade. Look at this one. Mm. 
This one, Syrian Bedouin. This one, old. This one, color, vegetable dye. No color, undyed. Look. Touch. Very soft. Look, this one, this one, devil. How it's bright. beautiful. How bright this one. This one, 300,000 Syrian pound, mm. 20 US. Wow. 20 US, very fine. I make here a stop. Here is a stop, this one, price. You can see him again here, a little bit more stylish. Everywhere. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try one of these beans. You see, they're preparing over there. It's like a lima bean, and we dip it in this, and then uh, you eat it like this, right? Yeah. Hmm. It's good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So you see, they're they're cooking them here. So you buy the the bowl of the beans, and then you get a little fork and you you dip them yourself and try them. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, it's, it's very hot. Very good. You can also drink the soup he gave us some to try. So, <laughs> thank you. Oh, it's delicious. It has a really nice lemon flavor. It's warm, it's a cold day, it's perfect, wow. The other first impression of Syrian people are so incredibly kind. So we we just had those, those beans and this drink here, we didn't have to pay anything. They just, the guy just offered it to us, knew we weren't from here and wanted to, to treat us nicely. It's really amazing, people here are incredibly kind like this something I've noticed immediately after getting here. Really impressive. Oh, the different uh, animals. So. Wow. Different herbs and stuff, medicines. There's even like a animal carcass up there. Some old traditional medicine from back in the day. Spices here. And get a mix, mix bag there. now entered this beautiful Ottoman palace. One of the rulers of Syria or Damascus, this area, built this incredible palace just nearby the, the central mosque. Um, and it is a beautiful garden, would have had his own hammam here, would have had space for all of his wives, of course, uh, his slaves, his other servants working here, um, and recreational areas. Really, really impressive. Uh, back in the Ottoman days, how they would have done it here.
now it's been turned into a museum. And so you can come in here and, and admire the architecture of this uh, very beautiful old Damascus home. See the style that's built in. The mother-in-law will took care of uh, the girl and they celebrate in a special way before a night, before the wedding. So you can see here. In Syria, the relationship with the mother-in-law and the wife is very important because when someone gets married, the, um, the daughter is gonna go live with the husband's family. So people all live in their family home. So you'll have multiple generations in one home. And so the daughter has to, you know, do well with the mother-in-law and they celebrate and, and um, she'll come and live at the husband's home with that family. And the mother-in-law is excited because it's like, you got another like wife or, or mother in the family now to do some of the additional work as well. So that's what we saw them celebrating that wedding back there. Thank you, thank you. Trying the, the hair of the girl or the cotton candy, the Syrian cotton candy. Thank you. Mm. It's very good. What is, what is it made from? With dough, with sugar. The dough, okay. Yeah, it has a doughy flavor. It's really good. It's not just pure sugar. It's, it's a bit doughy. That's what makes it taste very unique. Mm. I could eat a lot of that. Yeah, I love it. Very sweet. I could eat a lot of this, definitely. Now we're here in the old bazaar of Damascus. You can see it's covered, it's dark in here. Um, but behind me, this is the Han. So this is an old hotel that traders would have stopped at and stayed. So they would be coming to Damascus to sell their goods, traveling long distances, and they would come in here through these gates. You can see two gates right here. Um, and they would come in and they would stay. And now it's kind of a museum and a very pretty architectural place. With this architecture, the black and the white stones here, you see black and white stones, but you come in and just beautiful. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a cafe now, perhaps a museum, open air museum you can come. But, Beautiful, and so these rooms around the end and up there is where you could stay if you were a trader. And then this area, you could leave your camels, you could store your goods, things like that. And it's a uh, it's good temperature inside. It's a little bit cold, but I imagine in the summer, it's a lot nicer being in a place like this. It's a little bit cooler. So in the ground floor, they store the products and the animals, animals, yeah. And in the first floor, they live there. So mm. you can go upstairs also and have like a bigger look to the place. The good photos, we will take it from the from corner. There. Okay. It's really pretty from the upstairs part. Behind me, you can look down at the cafe and lobby below. And these are the rooms. So people would stay in these rooms overlooking. So you can kind of see into one of them. It's more like a prison cell, but <laughs> I'm sure if they refurbished this place and, and made it nicer, it actually could be like a really cool hotel. Some of the hotels around here are actually old homes like this or old places like this, smaller homes that have been refurbished um, into really nice hotels. This one's a bit bigger, but it's something they could do. So welcome to the Umayyad Mosque right behind me. They call Damascus the fourth holiest city in Islam. And the reason is this mosque behind me. So let's go inside and learn more about why they call it the fourth holiest city in Islam. Oh, 
So the first reason why this place is holy is it has been one of the longest used like religious structures in possibly the world. For thousands of years, they've had different religions using this spot for worship. Of course, it is a mosque now, but uh, for, for, for forever, um, they've had different religions. So that makes it holy. The second thing, um, right behind me, and we're trying to go in historical order of the religions, um, but behind me here is the tomb of John the Baptist, and so his body is down, um, down below this tomb, like four meters into the ground there, and uh, that's another, you know, very important figure to the Christian religion, and um, he is housed right there, as well as to the Islamic religion, and so people will come here. Um, to, uh, you know, to pray or to seek blessings, things like that. The second reason is behind me here. I'll tell you in a second. So back there where I didn't want to speak so loudly, that is the head of Hussein, or so they say. And so uh, Hussein, was the second Imam, the son of Ali, uh, the first Imam in the Shia tradition. And he was murdered by Yazid and his forces who came from Damascus to Karbala in Iraq. And that's where they, um, that's where they martyred Hussein. And that's really important in the Shia religion and also a tragedy for, for all Muslims as well, that something like that happened. But they killed uh, Hussein and the original story goes that they um, they took Hussein's body. They didn't want his um, his enemies to be able to desecrate his grave, so they took his body. They tied it to a camel, sent it off into the desert, and then you know nobody knows what happened to it. So it disappeared forever. Um, and they say that um, um, you know I'm not sure how they found his body. I can't remember all the details, but. The Battle of Karbala is where Hussein was killed, and that's why there's a very, very important mosque there um, in the Shia tradition. And so, um, but they believe that maybe his head was taken and brought here. And so many Shia, especially from Iraq and Iran, will want to come to Syria. They'll want to come here to ask for blessings um, from Hussein, and they view it as a holy place. And so, um, that's, that's sort of the story behind that. So the final reason why this mosque is so holy, why this place is so holy rather, is this minaret behind me. And so this was actually originally, there was a church right here. As I told you, this place had a church as well. And so that church for uh, a reason I'm not sure why, but they had a minaret. Um, and that was part of the architectural style perhaps. And the Muslims believe that when uh, it is the end time, they believe that in this mosque here, Mahdi, who is the, the, um, the Shia believe that he is the 13th Imam, the Sunni believe uh, another thing, but they believe that this Messiah-like figure is going to come back to the earth to, um, in the end times, to lead a battle against good and evil, um, and uh, you know everyone returns to heaven, sort of that, um, that sort of story from the Bible. And they believe that, uh, the, that Jesus Christ is actually going to come down from heaven through this minaret. They believe he will be a Muslim when he comes back. But he'll come back through this minaret. He will join Mahdi here in prayer in this mosque behind me, and then they will head to Palestine to a place that uh, is, is sort of, in their language, it kind of sounds like Armageddon, the way we say the end of the world, and that is where they will fight the Antichrist, and that will be the, the final battle between good and evil, the end of the world. And so that's the belief, that's why this place is so holy, that's why they think that uh, you know this is where uh, Jesus Christ and Mahdi will be reunited and will lead that battle against good and evil in the end times of the world. We're now, uh, leaving the mosque right behind me. Some very old architecture. This is actually from when this was a temple. Some of this architecture here. But we are now, we're now continuing in 
to the oldest bazaar here in Syria. And uh, it's kind of kind of looks like a tunnel. It's covered. As so you can see, lots of different shops around here. People selling. Seems to be more clothes. The other bazaar we were at was more food and candy and sweets. So we're at the oldest ice cream shop here in Damascus. And this guy's doing some music. But this is how they, they pound the ice cream um, to create what's over here, the finished product. It looks very good. I'm actually allergic to pistachio. I won't die or anything, but I am allergic. So we're gonna get one without for me, but I'm very excited to try this pounded ice cream. Here we got it, the creamy ice cream with a little sweet milk on top. Mmm. I see why this place has stayed in business. It's very good. This is our ice cream here. And this one's like, this is like the pudding. This one is the pudding with almonds and cherries. Let's try it. Mm. Mm. That's also delicious. And finally, we'll try the drink. Sahla. So you, you, put, you put this in, okay. It's like a sweet milk. Yeah. Sweet milk with a, this is like a bread. Yeah. yeah. Sweet milk with a little piece of bread. Cinnamon. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of cinnamon in here. So let's try it. Mm. That's delicious. So we are outside of Al Burj now a famous shawarma shop here in Damascus, and it's very old. And so we're gonna be getting some shawarma, which is a meal that is from the um, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine region. But um, all the countries wanna claim it as their own, but we'll just say it's Ottoman food, because it came from the Ottoman Empire. And so behind me, they have the meats that they grill, um, and they spin it around as it grills, and then they put it into some bread with some, usually some hummus or tahini. Depends on the type you're getting, whether it's with meat or chicken. Oh, yes, thank you. So we're trying the meat with a little bit of the sauce on it. It's like a, a garlic sauce that they put on it. Absolutely delicious. Mm. Very, very succulent. And you can come up here. Oh. And you can see the different meats that they're cooking. But, mm, that was so good. So we are going to order some shawarmas and then try them out and tell you what they taste like. And now the finished product right here looks so good. Mm. Please. Thank you. They're just feeding me all the chicken here. Mm. But this one, the garlic and that garlic cream, it's amazing. So this shawarma, very simple ingredients if it's chicken 
you have the bread, and then inside is a very simple garlic cream with garlic, olive oil, lemon, and then pickles and chicken, and that's it. And that makes the shawarma, and it's so amazing. And it's different from donor, donor that they would have in Turkey specifically uses more vegetables. The meat's the same, but they add in tomato, some lettuce, some salad. Those are things that are not a part of the traditional shawarma. This is the real, real stuff from where it actually came from. We won't say Syria, we'll say the Ottoman Empire, so nobody else gets mad. But this is where it actually came from, and it's so much better here, the real one. To finally finish our first night, we are at one of the nicest restaurants in Damascus having some amazing food. It's called Narinj, and I'm gonna take you on a kitchen tour. So let's come in. Hello, how are you? Wow. Look at these. These little flatbreads with some cheese and meat inside there. Hi, how are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you, you're the chef. Uh, yes. Yeah. We'd love to see the kitchen a little bit. Yeah. yeah. service and back in here yeah. yeah wow you can see they're preparing all of the food back here hi oh stop okay yeah yeah, no yeah. okay and we'll come back here and see some of the grilled meats here going on oh look at these wow I don't even know what this is, but it looks good. It's like a meat pie. And this is the some meatballs cooking in pomegranate juice here. And the oven back there, they're baking some things. And of course, all of the breads. Wow. Looks good. So we are. Wow. Looks like samosas. Yeah. Looks good. Thank you. So that is the kitchen at one of the nicest restaurants here in Damascus. Maybe the nicest restaurant. You can see beautiful open area. The uniforms of the waiters and waitresses are really cool as well. So we're over here. We're having some some food. We're having some, what do we call this again? Arak. 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 We're having some Arak. So this is like an anise flavored liqueur. Different, uh, different foods here. My favorite has been this one that we've already finished. Mohamara, yes. We've already finished that one, so you can't see it now. But we've got some like eggplant in here, we've got some hummus here, a few different salads. An overall really great meal and great first day here in Damascus. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's a, it's a beautiful city. Um, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of Syria. I think we've just seen one side so far. Uh, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video, Damascus has actually grown during the war. Um, people have fled here. Uh, so, you know, when you think of Syria, you think of like destruction. Um, and that's not all what we saw today in Damascus. We saw a very different side of the country. But, um, you know, of course, things will be different in future videos. Um, but uh, overall, you know, Damascus, it seems like a scary place you wouldn't want to go to. So unsafe. Um, that's not at all the experience today. The experience was very positive, very nice people, very beautiful place. Um, and, you know, you would hardly know that a war even went on if you weren't aware walking around the city. And so um, that's, that's how it was. That's the first day here. But things will be different uh, as we move to some other places. A lot of the war was, was really not in Damascus. It was in the countryside. And that's where most of the people who fled the country fled from. Um, and so it's a, it's a 
different situation here in the capital. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the way Syria is portrayed, the way Damascus is portrayed, um, you know, with constant negative news coverage about what's happening here. And then, of course, the, the actual reality um, of a fairly normal place. Um, you know, of course, they have economic problems, uh, you know, and, and not a lot of political freedom, really none at all. But it is a, um, you know, I felt very safe here. I, you know, the people are incredibly kind. Um, seems to me so far like a, you know, fairly normal experience traveling anywhere else.